Previously, I've tried playing Polybridge 2 using only ropes, springs, and even just roads. Today though, we will be embarking on quite the kinetic journey because I want to try beating Polybridge 2 using only hydraulics for support. Now I want to set some ground rules here and require that all hydraulics are set to either the max expansion or compression. This prevents me from just locking all of them in place, which would be kind of boring. Also, I want to add a hydraulic phase to the start of every level that doesn't already have one. This means that every level will be in motion and and in fact, you could already see what I'm planning for level 1 in World 5. Now you can see the normal way to beat this level is to get the truck all the way to the bottom, and then it has to go up a ramp and slide right back down. And while this might not seem too hard, getting all of these angles to stay rigid as the hydraulics expand is not going to be easy. So starting out here, I actually put in a straight roadway, and after I did that, I wanted to start supporting it. Now I did have an idea of how I could make hydraulics that are expanding pretty much stay the same length. In order to do that, I started making a diamond hydraulic hydraulic here, and you'll notice the bottom two legs are going to be expanding, but the top two legs are going to be contracting. Now I realized this was going to be a lot harder than I was expecting, so I actually deleted that hydraulic, and I decided to refine the design a little bit here. You'll notice what I'm doing is putting two hydraulics right on top of each other, and I'm only moving them over by a single grid point in the middle. That is minimizing the distance the middle hydraulic is moving, and you'll notice now that very top node of the hydraulic stays almost perfect perfectly in place as the hydraulics move. Now that was really good, but still I need to figure out a way to brace everything together with this, and it's really not going to be a given. There's just so many nodes that are going to be going around here that preventing everything from just overlapping is not going to be easy. Now you'll notice now I put another fixed length diamond hydraulic in place, and after that I sort of just started putting in more of these. I was kind of going haphazardly because I didn't really know what to do, and trying it out already things were not going well. Now I'm trying making a few improvements here, like making truss on top instead, and it seemed to help a little, but it's still just folded in on itself. And by moving around some stuff, I did get it to stay mostly flat, but the road was still almost entirely unsupported, and I actually wanted to come back to this level later once I got a little bit better at this challenge. Now, next up here is a level that had a solution that was at least slightly more obvious to me. You can see here the normal way to beat it is to have these springs fling up the car to the top, but I was thinking I could probably just replace these strings with some hydraulic mechanism to push them up, and that would probably work too. So first thing I did here is deleted all of the extra materials that I couldn't use, and after I did that, I flattened out the roadway, and I started supporting the top right bridge. Now I needed to come up with a way to make a truss design to work here, and I figured this out. If I set a bunch of expanding hydraulics like this, and then used my fixed length hydraulic trick from before, it would actually create a rigid truss that mostly kept the roadway flat. Now you can see bracing it to the wall here, it does angle up slightly, but for the most part the road is remaining in place and I was pretty happy with that. Now I actually copied this over to the front side as well, and now it was angling up a lot more, but I still thought I could probably work with it. So with that done, you can see here I actually expanded out the roadway even further, and it was time to start working on the middle hydraulic. Now I needed a system to push up this roadway really far, and I was thinking a scissor mechanism would probably be a good way to go here. So I started making that now, and the whole idea of the scissor mechanism is you have these two arms, and as you pull them closer into each other, it should move up the roadway. The other good thing is that it's pretty much infinitely stackable, so the more stages you have, the further it goes. Now after I got that on there, I actually got rid of the roads just for now so I could figure out all the movement, and once I was ready, you can see I'm testing it out, and as it pulls in, it actually does move up pretty far. One problem though is that the top nodes do start to fold into each other a lot, so while they are making that full distance, it wasn't exactly the geometry I wanted. Now another major problem is that when I went to try this with roads on it, it kind of instantly failed. It just didn't quite have the strength to do it, and of course if I keep adding more hydraulics onto this, I'm just gonna run out of room because there's just not enough enough room for nodes. So next up, I wanted to delete this and actually use just diamond hydraulics. Now this is the same idea of what I had before, but instead of setting two hydraulics to expand and two to contract, I could set all of them the outside to expand and the middle one to contract. Now I added that to the other side as well, and you can see testing it out now, as the hydraulics start expanding up, they go much further than a normal hydraulic could. This really starts to give me the distance I need, but I'm only about halfway there. Now worry about stability in a second here, but first I need to get more distance out of this, and to do that, I I started replacing segments of the diamond hydraulics with themselves diamond hydraulics. This extra distance got me quite a bit further here, but I still need to go even farther. So of course I started deleting more segments and replacing them with more diamond hydraulics. And you can see already the left side is going a lot further than the right side. So I finished that up for the left side as well, and I tried using 
just some bracing to keep it all together here, but you'll notice it's getting very complicated and I'm having a really hard time keeping track of everything. I seem to connect something up wrong though, and then it just fell apart. So what I wanted to do here was set up another diamond hydraulic and make it outside in the machine and then paste it on once I was ready. This did require a lot of tuning since I need to make sure nodes weren't overlapping, but it was definitely the easiest way to go here. And you see once I pasted it on here, I wanted to give it a test. And already the expansion did not seem half bad. It was kind of getting complicated and I couldn't really tell what was going on. And at one point something ended up breaking and it caused it to fall to the left. I tried it with the car on it just to see if it would help at all, but this also seemed to fail and I need to take a little bit of time to tune it. Now I had a few failures as well where it would just fling the car back really fast. But after messing with the roadway and just making some pretty random changes, eventually finally something got up to the top and didn't fall backward and the car was able to drive off and beat the level. Now this next level here had one of my favorite solutions, but it also ended up being one of the more simple ones. You can see starting out, I built up a roadway here and the main goal of the level is to get the first two cars to the top platform, but the van and the second car to the bottom one. So I put in some diamond hydraulics here just to support everything up and after that I used my trust trick to try to keep the entire road together. Now I forgot the angles of stuff about the way I wanted, just copy this over to everything else and you can see now getting the car across ended up working entirely fine. Second car can get across as well, but now we need to find a way to get the van to the bottom and in order to do that I'm gonna need some sort of sliding road. So I deleted the last road here and after I did that you can see now I'm moving the diamond hydraulic support just to get it in a bit of a better position. After that here you can see I'm starting to build up that roadway again and I'm gonna support it to the bottom node but this time the plan is to use another road to anchor it up but since the van weighs more it should barely overcome that weight and knock it down. So after getting those two diamond hydraulics in place here next thing I did is started working on that other road and in order to do that I put down a couple of hydraulics here and I set them to be fully expanded. I also moved them out pretty far here to get some good leverage over this and after that you can see now I'm putting that road on the end of that node. Now given it a test here you can see the first car gets across fine and the second car as well but once the van tries to get across it actually does start to push it down. Now it does work but then it just falls straight into the water and I'm gonna need a way to get that over. In order to do that I just built up a really simple ramping road here and I was hoping that was just gonna be enough to do it. So first two cars get across here after that you can see the van comes across and it really takes its time to get this down but eventually it does do it and you can see as it hits that road it breaks it but it is enough to get it pushed over to the island and it hit its flag. Now finally here I just have this last car to get through and I was hoping it was gonna make the gap just fine but fortunately threads it really well and that piece the level. Now this next level here is pretty quick but I also thought I had a pretty good solution. Now this level is called trading places and you can see the way that the cars are starting moving up and down and trading places. Now ordinarily you can see it's not too bad of a level you can choose a bunch of springs to dampen the load but getting this to work with hydraulics is a little challenging. Now I started out here by using my normal truss system to try to keep everything together but I did run into a small problem because as the road angles a little bit it's actually kind of hard to keep that from not just pulling into the center even more. After I got that hooked up though I used another diamond hydraulic to support it up here and once that was in place you can see it was working and allowing the car to get down. And after I had that in place I actually started building up the top roadway as well and I wanted to keep it mostly separate. I realized that connecting the roadways together was probably going to cause them to bend in ways I didn't want and just keeping them separate makes it as simple as possible. But you can see now I actually got that top car all the way over there and after that the bottom car gets across too. The thing is though I need the bottom car to get to the top and in order to do that I need some sort of system to pull up a roadway. Now I started out here with this and you can see it mostly worked except that the bottom car instantly destroyed it but by angling the roadway down instead you can see now I get the bottom car across top car gets across as well now that roadway pulls right back up into place that allows the top car to get through and the bottom car just scrapes the bottom and prevents it from actually destroying it and that beats that level now next up here is falling into place which is one of the quirkier levels in the game and you can see as the top car gets across here it ends up dropping the whole bridge down and after that the van has to get across as well now one of the weird things about this level is actually that the cars are slightly underpowered at times so I have to make sure that everything's gonna line up really well once I pull it into place. Now also making this work with hydraulics isn't exactly gonna be a given and trying to get everything down to the right levels while also not hitting the terrain is gonna be a little hard. Now I started out here and of course I used my normal truss system and after I started building up one of those I actually extended it out to the rest of the bridge here and you can see once I did that I started working on the bottom of the bridge. Now this is where I want it to start pulling down into place and in order to do that I need two main things. The first one is what I'm working on here it's the guiding arm and what this is gonna do is keep the bridge from falling to the left or the right side as it comes down and hopefully keep it moving mostly straight down. Now I wanted to keep one of those on each side just to make sure everything stays right in line and after I finish supporting that up here you can see what we're working on next is a diamond hydraulic. This diamond hydraulic is going to be a contracting one and it's going to actually pull down the bridge and keep it from just falling all the way to the bottom. So after I got that all hooked up here you can see the tow truck goes across
across, and it starts holding down the bridge here, and while it does distort it slightly, and you can see there's a lot of stress in the middle, the van does manage to get across and not break everything. Now, the stress is extremely high, and the van almost didn't make it, but at least that's done, and all I have to do is get it down another time. That's kind of the hard part, though, because now I need a trade-off mechanism to take it from that part where the van is down to where the Model T is. I also want to break the bridge up, because I only want to take the middle section of it. And after getting some supports put in place there, I also started working on the bottom, and you can see now I'm putting in that diamond hydraulic that's actually going to pull it all the way down. After that, I started using some more hydraulics here, and these are going to finish up the job and get it all the way to the bottom. And with a little bit more hydraulics, I finally got the solution here. So you can see here, tow truck gets across. After that, pulls the whole bridge down, just like you saw before. This time, a hydraulic breaks, but it doesn't seem to cause any problems, because as this pulls down, it does sort of get into place. Now, it's very chaotic, and you notice that the bridge on the left side actually hits into the Model T. Fortunately, though, the Model T just slips under it as it moves up. After that, you can see it gets across here and hits its flag. Now, this next level was one I was actually kind of scared of for a while. It's just so much ground to cover, and trying to get this to work with hydraulics, even slight distortions, are going to cause the whole bridge to move a lot. So I wanted to start here and just start with the most simple bridge I could. Just have a road go all the way across, and on that, you can see I'm putting a bunch of expanding hydraulics. Now, I'm using my trick from before again, where I have my truss system, and once I built up one of those, I expanded it out to the rest of the bridge here. Now, I knew the only way I was going to get this bridge supported was going to be through ropes, but of course, I don't have any, so I'm going to need to make ropes out of hydraulics. And I did some thinking, and that's when I realized that if I use an even number of hydraulics in a chain that are all the same length, if half of them expand and half of them contract, you'll notice the final length of the rope ends up being the same. Now, I tried to use that here, but it didn't seem to work, and after a bit of thinking, I realized I can't connect it to the top of the truss since that's expanding up. I need to connect it to the roadway itself. So if I forget that put in place here, you can see I'm expanding half the hydraulics, and with that done, I actually copied it over to the other side as well. Now, I figured that wasn't going to be enough, so I also put in two more ropes here, but this instantly snapped the bridge, and I was a little concerned about that. So I added in more ropes here, and after I did that, I also ended up severing the bridge right in the middle. This means that the two bridges can slightly move against each other, and that seemed to remove a lot of stress. And honestly, with not too much difficulty, you can see here, truck gets across. It was stressing out the bridge a lot more than I was hoping for, but fortunately it wasn't too big of a problem, and you can see, beat the level. Now next up here is probably my cheesiest solution of the entire video, because normally in this level, the goal is to have all of these platforms move together, but you only have one hydraulic. Now of course, I have a lot more than one hydraulic, so the goal is really just to get one of these to work and then copy it over. The thing is though, that's actually not a given, because the way all of these are going to be expanding, it's not easy to get these angles locked in so that it actually moves up the way I need. Now you can see here I supported all the bridges up and the car gets across here, but I still need a way to bring it up, and in order to do that I started working on a guiding arm. Now fortunately there are a lot of attachment points this level, so I was able to attach it up to everything I needed here, and after I had that hooked up in place, I put on another guiding arm to the other side of the bridge. Now I also needed a way to pull up the bridge, and in order to do that I wanted to attach it to the top of the truss here and use a couple of supporting arms to have this hydraulic contract in and pull up the bridge. In this first test, though, it just didn't seem to pull it up enough. I realized a better idea would be to move the supports of the bridge to the very bottom and then pull up from the bottom. So after I get that hooked up here, I wanted to give it a test now, and you see Model T gets on it fine, and it pulls up here, and it does start angling back, but fortunately the gap ends up being small enough that it ends up being okay. Now next up, you see Model T gets to this platform, I need to go down. Fortunately though, I can pretty much just copy-paste everything. The last platform does require a slight bit of tweaking since I don't have the exact same attachment points, but with only a little bit of difficulty, I got everything attached up here, and you can see everything goes in unison. Now, the last platform is acting slightly differently. You can see the angle is slightly more shallow, and that's because of the different attachment points. It's just the different way that things move end up creating a slightly different result. Now, the LT ends up getting on the second platform here, and you can see it lowers down, and fortunately, nothing breaks. It does end up hitting the back of the platform, but again, fortunately, that doesn't cause any problems, and you can see now getting on this last platform here, pulls right up, and with that, I can end up hitting the flag, and beat the level. Now moving on to this next level here, you can see I already have a bunch of hydraulics around, and that's because I was messing around with this for a long time here before I ended up coming up with this solution. Now I wanted to jump in here because I pretty much reset everything. You'll notice what I'm doing is really just focusing on the bottom bridge for now and just try and get it as secure as possible. Now I'm using my hydraulic ropes that I made before, and once I get that in place here, you can see truck gets across, and now I can actually start working on the hard part of the level. Now you might wonder what's so bad about this, but the Model T on top needs to get across and you can see there's a checkpoint in the middle, but that means that the road it goes over is going to somehow need to avoid the plane. And in order to do that, I need 
the dump truck on the bottom to carefully push up a road in place and then have that road get locked. Now the normal way to solve this level is to use some sort of rope system with springs so that as the road falls down it doesn't just smash the bridge, but of course that's not really an option for me. So here what I'm doing is just bracing up the two sides of the top bridge and after I have those in place I'm putting down two dangling roads. Now I was hoping to push up either of these roads and get that to lock in place. So now I just need a road to hit the dump truck and that's what I added in here. And after that you see there I added in another hydraulic and with that done you can see just avoids the plane. The dump truck still hit into it and it starts to push it up but it doesn't really lock and that's actually where these two hydraulics in the bottom are going to come into play. You notice next time I'm moving around the road but also these two nodes are almost perfectly overlapping. The goal is to get them to perfectly sit on top of each other and once they do that I can create a system that locks them together. Now I already have that in here two hydraulics but it ended up getting stuck way often. It took a lot of tries but eventually here I did get the truck under it but it still wasn't locking and I had to think about this for a minute and that's when I realized that what I really need is another set of locks and I'm also going to need a hydraulic rope in order to lock it in place. Now this is all getting kind of complicated but you can see here the main goal was just to tune the roads so that the truck could get under it but also have it get pushed up just enough that it gets stuck in place. And after I got really close I actually also added another road because what I wanted to do was just use this system to bridge the entire gap instead of having two separate systems. And you can see already it's really close but it just locked slightly too early and the truck ended up getting stuck. So I just barely started moving some stuff around to get it to compress slightly less and once I had that there I gave it another test here and you can see that it just locks perfectly in place, gets stuck right at the top there and Malti can get across and it can also get back. And of course with that ended up being the level. And of course lastly here I still have this first level I need to get back to. And in order to solve this I actually started supporting some stuff with more hydraulics but also deleted a lot of what I had. This was because I was using contracting hydraulics for the struts, but really expanding hydraulics I found worked a little bit better. That was mainly because the contracting hydraulics would pull in and sometimes snap the bridge, but the expanding ones never ended up doing that. And you can see already here, I have the full length supported and the truck can get all the way down. That's not quite enough though because I still need the truck to roll back. And that's where things get kind of hard. Normally you'd want to use a lot of road segments on this ramp to make it as smooth as possible for the truck to get back down, but my problem is that the more segments I have is the more segments I have to support and that means the more hydraulics I need which makes things really complicated. So I ended up going for this design which was pretty smooth and I just wanted to do a good job supporting it and trying to keep everything together. And with all those diamond hydraulics in the bottom done I also started using this top support structure and once I had that on there I also extended it out to the top as well. So with that done I wanted to give it a quick test now and surprisingly after not too many tries it actually did work. The truck got all the way down and you can see as it crests at the top it just slowly begins to roll back down this really awkward way, but it's just enough to get all the way down there, and that ends up beating the level. So guys, thanks for watching. It's definitely sad to say, but I think this is the end of beating the polybridge with only one type of material. There might be one more video coming, but if it does, I definitely need extensive mods in order to get it going, so it definitely will not be easy. But if you want to see other polybridge content, make sure to subscribe. If you have any other questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below, and otherwise, till next time.